Oh, another beautiful day in cutting edge game graphics. Look at this. Ultra HD, full ray tracing, a billion polygons per nipple. But something's holding all of this back. That's better. Now the difference here may at first seem like a mere shift in contrast and saturation, but it's not. It has to do with a much more fundamental way of how we handle color in the virtual world. Let's talk about that. Real-time graphics have reached unprecedented levels of model detail and lighting accuracy. Despite these advancements though, a key factor differentiating realism is color, specifically how it's processed and displayed but not through simple filters or color grading. People have tried that. What we're talking about today is much deeper. It's called tone mapping. We'll get to exactly how tone mapping works and why it matters so much. For starters though, the problem is most methods of tone mapping come from the film industry. And to fix this problem, we have to break away from these standards. They were made for Hollywood, and we've ran with the same standards in the world of virtual production without a second thought far too easily, resulting in many digital artists nowadays taking for granted or just not even knowing the foundational role it plays in all of the content they're producing. Myself and a handful of other artists have realized this, and the benefits of switching are obvious. For example, tone mapping mods for Cyberpunk 2077 have completely unleashed the game's true graphical potential, and the feedback is fantastic. No shot. That looks so f***ing good, man. Millions of people see the night and day difference. Also, Unrecord came out with their demo blowing people's minds, even to the point Apparently, there was a need for the dev to show it running in editor to prove it wasn't real life footage. All right, like, come on. As for my project though, it doesn't strive for photorealism per se, but I'm now using a revamped tone mapping setup as well, abandoning the one that came built in with Unreal Engine, and I'm all for it. It's a solution to a problem I've wrestled with for ages. There was just something just screwed up with color in my project, and I spent literally dozens of hours experimenting with post-processing settings, LUTs, color grading, even disabling the tone mapper and trying to filter that. I didn't need to disable the tone mapper, I just needed to replace it with a better one. So what is tone mapping? Well, it's a bunch of math that basically shifts a wide range of recorded colors into the limited spectrum viewable on screens. See, this graph shows all of the colors visible to the human eye, and you may be thinking, well, a lot of this stuff out here just looks the same. Well, that's because this triangle here is actually what your screen is able to display. In other words, behind the pixels of this screen, here in the virtual world, this chart actually has really smooth color transitions between tons of different hues that your screen just isn't able to spit out. See, all screens work pretty much the same. Each pixel has a red, green, and blue light, and each of these change brightness. And when the pixels are so tiny, those colors just blend together, you're able to create a pretty good range of color, or what's known as color space. But the key to tone mapping realism isn't so much about the range of color. The key here is the method by which we squeeze this range of undisplayable color into this range of displayable color. And that's what tone mapping is all about. It has its limitations though. See, given the nature of how these screens make color by changing the brightness of red, green, and blue, Tone mappers are presented with a choice between two different trade-offs. The tone mapper has to lean either towards representing less light with more saturation or more light with less saturation. With that said, meet ACES, or the Academy Color Encoding System. 
It's a very common tone napper that was developed for Hollywood and set the precedent for many other tone nappers. It was tailored for the film bros, though, who wanted to keep as much color their super fancy cameras could capture. And because of this, the Asus tone napper leans heavily on the side of showing less light with more saturation. Now, this higher saturation and decreased brightness in and of itself wouldn't be the problem. We can always correct that with color correction. And this is where we identify the problem tone mappers can cause that can't be addressed with color correction. See, by squeezing in more saturation, it reduces brightness, but it also totally jacks up the way we get between hues of color, as well as towards black or white, given the amount of illumination a surface is under here. I'll, I'll try and explain this better, what I mean by getting around between different hues. It's, it's about the behavior of the light. Now let's turn Asus back on, okay, and check this out. So this is what's called a Granger rainbow, and it really helps us see how Asus, while displaying more color, has harsh transitions between those colors. They kind of lag and then lunge towards the hue they're trying to display, and shadows or highlights just don't desaturate the colors as realistically. Keep in mind, just like the color space chart, these patterns on this rainbow are being created by your screen. The chart itself, the PNG file, actually has an infinitely smooth transition between the hues. As for the white and black though, that has to represent the saturation response under illumination. So there's actually no black or white at all. It's actually illumination in the engine. Now let's switch to the other method here. This is the same rainbow chart, but with what my project will be adopting going forward. A much better tone mapper, utilizing a custom preset and some fine tuning through post processing. You can see how the hue transitions and saturation are way smoother. See, it's really hard to put your finger on exactly what's going on if you just look at generic content using one tone mapper or the other, but this chart is really good at accentuating it. Uh, there, there is another way to visualize this to more like in action, maybe this will help. Side-by-side -side comparisons under smoothly shifting lighting conditions can help us see how this affects realism too. It's amazing how such little changes can make such a big difference to the human eye. To me, when certain hues come along, because the custom tone mapper doesn't try cramming so many hues in and oversaturating it, it almost feels like the gently tinted highlights show more color as they fall off to black, which, ironically, is what Asus is trying to do. Now I'll make a disclaimer. Before Asus and similar tone mappers in most game engines, we had linear color transform, which had to go. It couldn't even handle the saturation. Colors were there no matter what. So lightsabers, for example, couldn't even glow unlike they do with a tone mapper. Virtual production tools needed something, and Asus was there. And when it was built into Unreal, it was an improvement across the board. But now we're in a sort of renaissance for realistic graphics, integrating a mind-numbing amount of technology into various tools for realistic lighting and level of detail. And at this point, I personally don't think Asus should just be assumed to be good enough. It has its place, but it should be brought to the attention of more artists coming in to work with these tools and made easier to break away from. That's what I'm doing here today, and why I've put together a packet outlining all the resources and setup of how to recreate my realistic tone mapping in your own Unreal Engine projects. It works for content in editor, at runtime, and with offline renderings has marginal performance impacts, and should be compatible with all current and future versions of Unreal Engine 5. It's available on my Gumroad page, linked in the description. If you're not a developer though, and just appreciate what I'm doing here, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It allows me to do what I love and gets you access to all of my spicy content you can't find anywhere else, along with behind the scenes footage. Hope you enjoyed this video though, and congratulations, you now know more about color and gaming than even some career game developers in the industry today. Leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I'll see you next time. This has been Angelica with the AI Angel Project, bye for now.